Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this time I'd like to sort of take a little bit of a change in direction, if I may, and look at a form of photography that I confess I have been um, a little snobbish about in the past. Um, I felt it was not proper photography. Um, I felt that it was unnecessarily expensive and gimmicky, um, that it was aimed at hipsters, um, all the things that I didn't really want to get involved with. But I have to say, I'm changing my mind. Any idea what we're talking about? How about this for a clue? Does this count as personal development? <laughs> so hopefully this gives you a clue. We're going to take a look at Polaroid and uh, the very varied and wonderful world that it can be if it's something that you enjoy. Let's take a look. The story of Polaroid is a long and complicated one, and I'm not going to go into all the details here. But effectively, um, extremely popular in the 70s, uh, 80s and 90s, uh, it gave people um, the chance for the first time to actually take up photography without really knowing, having to know anything about it. They had the ability to see the results of their efforts straight away, um, and they were fun and quirky and all of the things that made them really, really popular. Uh, in the event of the digital age, uh, their popularity declined quickly, filed for bankruptcy a couple of times, uh, obviously went out of business, all their assets were sold off and that sort of thing. An organisation called The Impossible Project bought the sort of trademark and the identity of the company in 2017 and later on changed their name, but they've now changed their name again to Polaroid. And so you can buy uh, the cameras again, you can buy the films again and all that sort of stuff. So vintage cameras, like this one here, which I'm gonna come back to you, uh, are now seeing a new lease of life. I myself have three. Okay, I've got the Polaroid in Image 2 here, uh, which is uh, known as Spectra in some parts of the world, so that might be more familiar to you. Um, and takes Spectra film being sold as new. Got here the Pro Pack, which takes a few different kind of films actually, but again, um, readily available now, if a little expensive uh, for us to have a play with. This is the Spirit. This is the 600CL, um, which is a lovely looking camera in my opinion. Um, Many, many thanks to my friend Lisa who has uh, donated this to me. I'm really, really grateful. I'm going to uh, use it with love um, and uh, indeed we'll show you how it works. So this is the Polaroid Spirit 600 CL. Okay, um, basically the same as all the other Polaroid 600. 600 refers to the type of film that's going in there. It's uh, um, ISO of 600, um, but there's a whole range of these cameras in different colors, shapes and sizes, but they're all 600s. Um, the Spirit was a uh, one of a few sort of limited edition models that were released. Um, there are many more, some with branded with company logos and all sorts like that. So I'm not going to be covering them all. This is just a, a catch-all video, if you like, for the uh, 600 series. Nice robust camera, obviously plastic, um, but nice and solid. Um, as you can see, not an awful lot to it. Um, we open it up just by pulling, and then we get the front. Pretty straightforward stuff, like I say, very little controls because it was aimed at people who you know, didn't understand the finer points of photography. But um, there are some adjustments that you can make. So we have a viewfinder here, which uh, on the back is where we look through. We've got a light meter here, which I'll come back to because it's not the type whereby you actually um, get told what the exposure setting is, but I'll explain in a moment. Obviously our lens that takes the picture is here. Um, we've then got uh, a close-up lens. So there's a slider here, which you can maybe make out. Um, 
it helps you sort of zoom in and get um, a closer shot. It's ideal for portraits really. So on its standard setting like it is now, the focus is very, very wide depth of field. We've got from four feet to infinity. If I flick this over, you'll probably see another lens that popped over. Um, we're now focusing at between two and four feet. Over the viewfinder is a little circle, uh, and that's ideal for placing someone's face in if you're taking a portrait shot. If you just touch it, it all pops back the way it was before. Uh, we then got this uh, setting here for um, exposure, but just in simple terms of light and dark. So in the middle is your standard shot, and the light meter here is registering sort of uh, how fast the shutter will go. If I move the switch over to the dark side, more light will now be let into the um, light meter and that results in a darker image for a shorter exposure. Towards the light side, less light now is being let into the light meter, a longer exposure, therefore a lighter image. On the side here is our shutter release and it's in kind of two parts. If, as you can see at the top here, we've got a built-in flash, which I'll come back to in a second. If you don't want the flash to fire when you take the picture, you can just use this sort of uh, button behind. Pressing that will take a shot without um, the flash. If I want to use the flash, just use the front button, which obviously in turn then pushes the back button. On the back here, we've got uh, indicator lights to show when the flash is charging and when it's ready. No batteries in here at the moment, so obviously nothing is happening. I'll come back to batteries as well because they're a little bit um, uh, unusual. We've got a window down here for um, our um, frame count, in other words, how many pictures we've taken. Um, on the modern films that we're getting now from Polaroid, uh, there's eight shots uh, in a pack. Back on the front then, if I just close it down, which you do just by pushing, we have a, another um, button here, which if we push forward, will open the doors uh, to allow a film to be placed inside, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, you can see here it's reminding you that it's 600 film that we're to use. Now the film pack actually contains the batteries, which is great in some respects, because it means that you get a fresh battery every time you put in a new film. The drawback of that is, of course, I can't demonstrate this to you without actually uh, putting the film in. So let's get that done. So here's the film. Uh, as I said to you earlier, it was originally made by The Impossible Project, uh, who later changed their name to Polaroid Originals, and now they've uh, changed again just to Polaroid only, uh, but all the same organisation. Um, 600 film, obviously because it's a 600 model camera, um, so if you're looking for film, you're going to find sort of several different formats, which I'll look at in other videos. Um, but in the 600 range, um, there's two main types, black and white and colour. Obviously, I have colour here. Um, there's also a few limited editions with different colour frames and, and that sort of stuff. But this is just the basic stuff. And you'll find it um, on Amazon and a few other places. Um, as I've said to you before, um, I really, really do recommend uh, using Analog Wonderland, um, whom I'll leave a link to in the description below, and um, which will also, uh, if you use them uh, with my particular link, you'll get a free 35mm film with your order. So let's uh, unpack it and uh, get it into the camera. So here's the uh, cartridge pack and the uh, batteries built in. There's a, what's known as a dark slide on top which gives you some information about how to enter the uh, film into the camera. Leave that in place, that will get ejected the first time you uh, put it inside. So let's just go ahead and do that. Oops. These are the films in and uh, as you can see, batteries have charged up the uh, flash already. So we're uh, good to go. Wow. How cool is that? So if you leave that there now, 
We'll see you on the Well, there you go then. Polaroid, not all bad. There's some good sides to it too. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Basically what it boils down to is Polaroid is nice and simple to use. Uh, you don't need much photographic experience um, to operate one. Um, obviously not quite instant gratification in terms of seeing your picture, not like digital, but yeah, nice and quick and you get a hard copy. Um, I appreciate the films are expensive, but the cameras are very cheap. Um, I appreciate the colours are a slight, uh, slightly off compared to um, you know, the full richness that you would get in digital and some films. But as a lot of people out there do really enjoy the sort of uh, uh, off colour look, it's a, it's a distinct signature, if you like, of Polaroid. And if you're into your films and you like things like Cinestill and, and uh, Portrait and things like so, things like those, um, you may well enjoy this. It certainly forces you to look at what you're taking a photograph of and picture it in your head or how it's going to look when it comes out. So, like I say, it's, uh, there was no need for me to be as snobby as I have been in the past. All that remains me to say is thank you very much again for watching. Um, please have a look at the uh, link in the description below to Analog Wonderland. Like I say, you'll get a free 35mm film uh, from my link, so definitely worth a look if you haven't purchased from them before. Um, other than that, I'll see you next time.